Hey guys, it's Parker here again from testpropchampions.com and I'm back with another GED question and this comes up a lot. What do you do if you were taking the math section or any section and you failed the test but just by this much? You were really close to passing but you didn't pass. So I'm going to focus on the math section here but this could really apply to any section. And so we, I see a, there's a post here uh, from MoonBB04 on GED subreddit, and I wanted to share this because I really think that uh, MoonBB04 is a perfect example of how to really take it like a champ and how to really bounce back and have the right attitude. So, okay, so the post, so MoonBB writes, one point away from the math test today. I took the math GED test. My scores went up higher than the practice test that I took. I got 144 on the math GED test. I'm actually very proud of myself. The math GED test for me did not have any measurements, no mean, median, and mode, no base times height triangle, PEMDAs, right angle, straight and obtuse angles for me, but a lot of word problems. Just look closely at the keywords in the math word problems. Take your time going through the test. You get one hour and 50 minutes for the math GED test. But overall for me, I'm actually happy that I got that score. Believe in yourself. Go with your gut feeling for the answer for that question. Don't give up and keep trying. As Mr. Feeney said, do try good and dream from Boy Meets World. So that's kind of funny. Um, so anyway, I wanted to share my reaction and so to put this into context. Um, so first of all, when students go to take the test and they get really close to passing but they fail, um, one or two things happen. So either one, they get really, really, really discouraged and they shut down and they either give up or they, they kind of go into a funk or a little bit of a mini depression where for a couple weeks they're just, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to respond to it um, because it is so disappointing, right? So to get a score like 144, you were one point away from the 145 passing. So I've seen that happen actually. That does happen a lot. I've seen people, um, you know, that's actually more frustrating for a lot of people than it is to just go in and bomb the test, to completely fail it, right? Because in order to score close to passing, you probably were at least a little bit prepared. You probably did some preparation for the tests, or you have a strong math background already when you took it. And a lot of times that is more frustrating for people. It's like getting second place in a race, you know? You're, you know, you know that you should feel good, but if your goal was to win the race and you didn't do it, you came in second, you still don't feel that great. You still feel a little bit lousy. Um, and so it's really good that you're not discouraged at all. Your attitude is really inspiring. It's really awesome. You know, I really want more of my students to hear your story. I want everyone to hear this story. That's why I'm putting this video out here because your, your attitude is amazing. You know, I wish that everyone else had that kind of mindset of, you know, hey, I, I'm really happy. This is actually a good thing. I really liked how you put a positive spin on it and you put a positive, you're, you're, you know, you're forcing yourself to look at it in a positive light. You know, you didn't quite pass, you didn't reach the goal, but you were really close. And that's awesome how close you were. You know, I have no doubt that if, when you try it again, that you are going to pass it. So, um, you know, you can either take a situation like this with the GED test or anything in life in general where things don't go your way. And it's normal to be a little bit upset or a little bit frustrated, but the main thing is don't give up, okay? You don't want to give up. You don't want to get discouraged for too long, you know? Take a day or two, allow yourself to mope a little bit, but then, you know, you got to put it behind you, um, you know, get the dirt off your shoulder, keep going, you know, um, give up, don't give up, I should say. And so that's the second way people can respond is exactly like you are. Um, and not a lot of people do this. I think it's because, you know, we, we often think in society that failure is such a bad thing. It's such a terrible thing. But if we really think about it, you know, what happened? You know, you wasted a little bit of time. Um, and you didn't you didn't pass on your first try. You know, I wouldn't really even say it's wasted time because it sounds like you still got a lot out of it. And this is actually a good thing. I've told students this before that I've had students who have scored really close to passing but didn't quite. And I was like, you know what? This is actually a good thing because now you know that after all those weeks of preparation, you're you're almost there. Okay, you're almost there. You're on the right track. And so you know they didn't think of it that way at the time. But um, but I wish more people would have this attitude. So congratulations for that. Um, and I just wanted to comment on a couple other things that you mentioned. So you said uh, that for your test didn't have any measurements, mean, median, and mode, no base times, height, triangle stuff, PEMDAs. Um, so the stuff that you're describing is pretty typical of the kind of stuff that people spend a lot of time on. And so it's interesting that on your version of the test, it was mostly all word problems, which a lot of students say that it is mostly all word problems. Um, but it's just a good 
uh, a good thing for people to keep in mind out there that, you know, you want to understand the basics. You definitely have to know all that stuff, right? Your mean, mean, and mode, your triangles, all that stuff's fair game. And although, you know, on your test, you didn't have that. Um, but a lot of people, it, it can show up. That's all fair game. So you got to know all of that stuff. But at the same time, you know, don't sweat too much about any one thing on the test, right? Um, every version of the test is going to be different. So if you're watching this video because you failed your GED math test uh, just by a little bit, or you haven't taken it yet, just understand that everything's fair game on your test, okay? You know, but don't sweat any one thing too much. You know, it's better to know a little bit about everything than to know everything you know, about to, then to try to learn every single little thing. You don't have to know every single, uh, you don't have to have everything absolutely perfect and absolutely mastered in order to pass the test. If you want to get like a really high score, like college ready, college credit score, then you have to know absolutely every little thing, like the back of your hand, right? But if you just want to pass, you know, you just, I, I always tell people, know a little bit about everything. Know a little bit about geometry. Know at least a little bit about this, a little bit about that, because if you understand the basics, you're going to be able to reason your way through all kinds of problems. So sometimes people are thrown off a little bit when they're working on triangles and working on fractions and working on circles and mean, mean, and emote problems and doing that stuff all week. And then they get in there on the test and none of that stuff even comes up. And they say, what happened? All, all that studying I did was wasted. You know, the stuff that came up on the test was nothing like what I studied. Okay, and that's happening for, you know, there's two reasons why that happened. So number one, it's just luck. It, it's tough luck. The stuff that you studied, okay, um, that was all good. And you have to know all of that stuff. That was all fair game. So you didn't waste your time. It just turned out that the version of the test that you got didn't emphasize a lot of that stuff. Okay, um, and number two, you know, that stuff all helped you anyway. I mean, it's all related. If I could just impress that one thing on my students, it's all interrelated, you know, the skills that you're going to learn by understanding how to do slope and slope intercepts and, you know, how to use equations and plug numbers into equations and do geometry problems. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of algebra. It's a lot of basic algebra, um, a lot of different, you know, learning how to use equations, knowing your times tables. Like, it's all interrelated, even though it might not appear that way on the surface. So it's all interrelated. And the more math that you learn, the more that you understand you're going to be able to apply it to new situations. So like when you have these kinds of work problems and stuff on the test and you start thinking, man, this wasn't anything like what I studied. A lot of the times it actually is what you studied. It just doesn't appear like that because, you know, you've got to be able to take the ideas and the concepts that you learned and put it all together. Um, but so it sounds like in your case, you know, a lot of the stuff that people commonly spend a lot of time on um, wasn't emphasized on your test. And so that's a good lesson to people out there that, you know, don't spend your time, don't spend too much time on any one thing. Just make sure that you know how to do everything fairly well, a little bit about everything, but don't sweat one, one thing too much. Like if you're having trouble with triangles or fractions, learn the basics and then move on, learn something else. There's so much out there, you know, don't get too tripped up on any one thing. Okay, so some advice for somebody in your situation. Um, what I recommend is, first of all, keep a positive attitude, which you have one of the most positive attitudes I've seen out of anybody with a, a situation like this, actually. So I really applaud you for that, and I admire that, um, your perseverance. And um, so that's the number one thing. You know, don't get discouraged. Sometimes it just takes people multiple tries. I mean, there's no penalty. You can take the GED as many times as you need to. I think in most states, after three tries, you have to do like a waiting period with 60 days before you can test again. That depends on your state. Some states is different. Some states, I think it's only two days, or some states, if you fail it, you have a 30 day wait period. But in most states, uh, I think it is a three, you have a you know 60 day waiting period after you fail on your third try. Um, but it doesn't matter how many times it takes you, right? It takes you as long as it takes you. And then as soon as you pass every section, you're done. So don't give up. Um, but really, really focus on the stuff that you don't know. Okay, so what was on your test that you don't remember how to do? Was it word problems? Um, was there something specific? You know, try to write down, make a list of everything that you remember from your test that you didn't know how to do. And, you know, get back into your prep books or get on YouTube videos or meet with a tutor or your classmates if you're in a class or working with somebody and ask them, say, how do I do this? This is the stuff I got wrong. And, you know, it, it, at this point, since you were so close to passing, you know, if you just triple down and just spend you know, just go 20 to 30% harder than you think you have to on those topics that you're still a little bit shaky on. I, I almost guarantee that you won't have any trouble passing on your second try. So that's the first bit of advice. Uh, well, the second bit of advice is, first bit of advice, 
keep a positive attitude. Second bit of advice is just triple down on the stuff that you don't know how to do. Even if it's just, if you don't remember what it was, open up a prep book. You know, if you're using Kaplan, mine is somewhere around here or else I'd show up. But whatever kind of prep book that you're using, open it up, find the kind of stuff that you're shaking up. Find the problems that, you know, you look at them and you think, oh man, that's confusing. I don't know how to do that. Work it out and don't worry about, is this going to be on my test or not? Because it's all going to be on your test. Everything that you don't know, okay, it can come back to haunt you in one way, shape, or form. Because like I keep saying, it's all interrelated with math. It's all, almost all of it is interrelated. So if you work on, you know, certain type of problems like algebra problems, you know, that stuff is all going to come up again in word problems. You know, it just might look a little bit different, but you got to really know the basics, be able to reason your way through it. Okay, so, and then the third piece of advice that I would give you let's see, is just, you know, really make sure that your mind, you have the right mindset. And you definitely do. So I don't think that's a problem for you. But when you get in there, you know, test taking anxiety can be a problem for people. So if you've got your knowledge of the material down and you've got the right positive mindset and, you know, you get in there and you've got some kind of strategy for test taking anxiety, whether it's you're going to take deep breaths, you're going to give yourself a pep talk, you know, you're going to, if you're religious, you're going to pray before. Not everyone is religious, that's fine, but, you know, you definitely just want to put yourself in a, a state of mind where you expect that you're going to do well, you believe in yourself that you're going to do well, and you get in there and everything that you've been working on throughout your studying, leave it all on the table and, you know, whatever happens, happens. There's no guarantees in life, but I think that, I think that you're going to be okay, so... That's my video. Um, I hope that this was really helpful for you, and best of luck. I have no doubt that you're going to pass very soon. Thanks for watching.